And US lawyer Todd Falzone is suing Lime Scooters on behalf of a Florida woman left with catastrophic brain injuries after crashing off one, and he believes the electric scooters are a health crisis. 28-year-old security guard Ashante Gordon is in a vegetative state after being hit by a car while scooting home from her work in Fort Lauderdale. Todd Falzone believes Lime's giving conflicting advice to scooter riders and getting riders to sign up to ridiculous terms and conditions. I asked him how his client, Ashante, Shante is doing. Unfortunately, she's not doing well. Uh, she remains uh, in what we call a vegetative state. So she's uh, her eyes are open, uh, but due to the brain injury, there's um, there's very little function. She's not responding to uh, any kind of stimulus, um, and you know she's unable to speak. Uh, so it's a, it's a tragedy. Is there any hope for recovery or improvement? Well, we always have hope. Um, the doctors have uh, have not committed fully yet to whether or not uh, they'll expect any improvement from her. Um, they've they're they're waiting for the period of time when they can um, reattach the portion of her skull that's been removed. And um, what they had to do is take out, off a portion of her skull in order to allow the brain to swell. Um, so the swelling hasn't gone down yet. Once the swelling has gone down, and they they put a plate into her head then they'll be able to do the brain function test that'll tell us, you know, what her brain function looks like. Um, but they're, but by all signs so far, they've told us that um, it doesn't look promising that she's going to, um, you know, to be much different than this for the rest of her life. So these are catastrophic injuries. How did she get hurt? Explain what happened. So what happened was that uh, she, she works as a security guard at a local hospital here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and in the afternoon after her shift was over, she typically would get a ride home from coworkers. But um, this particular day, she had gotten off early and uh, there were no coworkers available to take her. So she uh, jumped on one of these Lime scooters. Um, and unfortunately, um, when she was going through the app in order to unlock the scooter on her phone, the app directed her to not operate the scooter on a sidewalk. Uh, they said it, it actually, the app says it three different times. You have to agree that you will not operate the scooter on a sidewalk. And in the state of Florida and in Fort Lauderdale, the only place that you're lawfully allowed to operate a scooter is on the sidewalk. So obviously she didn't know that. She trusted that Lime knew what they were doing and that they would not, um, you know, steer her into trouble. And unfortunately, that's exactly what they did. So she was operating it in the roadway, as Lime had told her to do. Uh, and unfortunately, at an intersection that she approached, um, she was T-boned by or hit on the side by a vehicle, by, by a car. And, um, you know, she's been unconscious since the time of the accident, obviously. So we, we can't really discuss with her any of the details about what happened out there at the intersection. But we just we know that she was in the center of the roadway, if you will, in the lane of travel, just like a car would be. Um, you know, and that was obviously because Lyme had instructed her to go there. Let's talk about what happens when you sign up to the app because you accept the terms and conditions and um, well they basically tell you in those terms and conditions if anyone bothers to read them that you've got to obey the local rules and regulations. That's what they tell you. So on that basis Ashanti should have what? Ridden her scooter where? On the footpath against their original instruction. Well, yeah, and, and I'll tell you this, uh, in, a, in our particular case, I'm not sure if the app is any different in New Zealand is, uh, than, it, than the one that's here, um, but in our particular case, um, the terms and conditions are on your, if you're going to read them on your smartphone, you're going to be there all day because they are hundreds and hundreds of screens that you're going to have to flip through in order to get through the terms and conditions, um, and they are... Uh, they're oppressive. They're not. It's not reasonable to expect that a that a, a normal person is going to read such conditions. Um, and certainly, while they say in the terms and conditions that you have to follow laws, um, you know, I, I don't know how reasonable it is to believe that someone who's going to jump on one of these scooters in the name of convenience is going to even know what the law is in the in the particular state that they're operating. And and in this particular case. The laws in the state of Florida say that those scooters are illegal to be operated on roads, on bicycle paths, and on sidewalks. The only reason why Lyme had any legal right at all to put these um, scooters in Fort Lauderdale was because of a local ordinance which allowed them the right to put them on the sidewalks. Um, 
So, you know, I don't know a single person. If you went out and polled, you know, every single person who gets on one of these scooters as to whether or not they know what the law is or what the local ordinances are in their particular jurisdiction, I would I would pretty much bet you that none of them know what you're talking about. But so, that is you know, the, it's one thing to... Mm, that, is the thing, that is the thing, though, isn't it, Todd? Because they, they have these terms and conditions, and this is terrible what has happened to your client. It's sad and devastating for the family. But what is the personal responsibility? Because they lay out all the terms and conditions, and you're right in saying that a lot of people won't read them, but that's on the scooter rider, isn't it, if you don't bother to read the rules? Well, I would imagine that, you know, everybody in, in Florida, the way that the law looks at it is they require people to act as a reasonably prudent person. And, you know, as far as uh, we look at this case, I think that it is, it's reasonable for a person to go through the process of, um, you know, reading the screens that are presented to you on the app itself. I don't think it's reasonable to think that someone's going to click on a term and condition link and go to the website and then and then read through you know, a couple hundred pages of legal um, mumbo jumbo in order to figure out what they're supposed to do, especially when whatever is in that terms and conditions, what it says is follow the local law, but then they tell you in the app that you are required to ride on the, and that you're not permitted on the sidewalk, you're required to ride the street. So it, it creates a, a conflict that I don't think a reasonable person would fully understand what they're getting into and, you know, relative to the, the scooters. Um, and that's really what, you know, a jury will ultimately have to look at in our particular case. Have you tried one of these? I have, absolutely. When they first uh, came out, I tried one in, um, I was in California, and um, they came out in the in the States. They first uh, showed up in California. And uh, and I jumped on one, and, and listen, and I'm a lawyer, okay, and I, and I should know terms and conditions, and I went through the app process, and I didn't go and read the, you know, the, the hundreds long page uh, disclaimers and waivers that they had on them. But uh, I did try them. Um, you know, it was fun, but it's it's a little bit um, daunting when you're in an area where there are no bike paths or where, there, where you're required to be on a sidewalk in Fort Lauderdale, particularly the sidewalks are narrow and there's people everywhere. So it's a, it's a little bit uh, off-putting to try to figure out where the heck you're supposed to go with these things. So in those terms and conditions which we discussed, they also, uh, there's a waiver there. You waive your legal, legal rights, basically. You can't be part of a class action, and presumably you're not supposed to be able to sue them either, are you? That's the theory. That's what they put in there. But, um, you know, whether or not that holds up in court, I, I, in this particular case, I'm, I'm very confident that the judge will invalidate those terms and conditions. So this is quite a significant, just, they, are, significant case in that respect, then, to see whether you can even sue them. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, it's going to be an issue. And I'm sure they're going to present it to the court at the first instance that they can. Um, but we're ready for them because the law here is pretty well established that when you violate the law, your terms and conditions or exculpatory clauses or waivers become invalid as against public policy. Um, How so would you... You can't contract. You can't contract to break the law with someone, and that is, in essence, what they did. How would you describe Lyme's approach to this? You know, I've, I've done some research and I've looked into the manner in which they've uh, rolled these out. And I can tell you that, um, you know, they talk a good game. They'll, their spokespeople constantly say that they want the safety, that they put the safety of the users first and things like that. But if you look at the manner in which they've rolled these things out, uh, at least in the United States, I'm not sure how they went about it in New Zealand. But what they did here was before they had approval in most cities, they just dumped these things on the street. Um, and so there was quite an uproar at the beginning of all of this because, you know, they hadn't gotten uh, legislative approval in, in, in many of the cities that they put them. And, um, and in fact, some of the cities like San Francisco then subsequently banned them because they hadn't put it, they hadn't gone through the process of getting, you know, uh, legislative approval. So I'm, I'm concerned about the way they're acting. And the, the fact that they have an app which um, is clearly not tailored to each individual jurisdiction's law is a problem. So, you know, I haven't met these folks yet. I haven't uh, taken depositions of any of these people yet. The time for that will come soon. But, you know, on, on initial appearance, it looks like, um, you know, at best this was uh, sloppy. Um, and at worst, it was an effort to just get uh, to get these things on the street so they could start making money before they really thought out where these things should be safely operated. Just briefly, these scooters came to Fort Lauderdale, I think, in November of last year. So what's the track record been like so far in terms of accidents and injuries? 
Uh, it's been horrendous. Um, we have one, um, the, the one local hospital where my client a- actually happens to be is the main trauma center in Broward County. And they've indicated they've had at least 40 people admitted um, at the hospital as a result of scooter injuries. They're, they're, they're piling up rather quickly. In fact, the, um, the city commission here, which approved them in November, recently took the matter up again last week because of the, of the number of injuries that have been happening out, out here. And, um, you know, they, they obviously, there were some concerns and they're planning to rework some of the um, rules about where these things are permitted to operate and how fast they're permitted to operate. Um, so, but, but there, you know, the doctors around the country here have, have been, you know, rather outspoken that they feel that this is creating a public health crisis. Wow, those are strong words. That's the, it, it, I've, I've read multiple statements from multiple trauma doctors around this, uh, the country who have all um, concurred with that opinion.